Hare Krishna. The first feature, the first component, this is a realization that I just had a few minutes ago. So I said, let me just share it to you. I'm about to, you know, get ready, go to the temple, boom, boom, boom. Have some good fun. Hare Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai. So this realization I have was basically we already understand that the first feature or component of the spiritual body, of the spiritual person, whether of Krishna or of you, all the viewers, is Sat, S-A-T. And once again, the second component is Chit. And the third component is Ananda. But I'd like to speak about Sat. Sat represents truth, truth, reality, eternity, eternality. So Sat is the foundation of all of our existence. Why? Because you exist, that gives the value of one or true or on. When you're speaking in digital binary language, one is on, zero is off, zero is non-existent. That's why we say that people like Mayavads are called Shunya. Shunya is, this is like, um, after I die, I'm not going to have any existence anymore. Or I will merge into the ocean of cosmic consciousness. Or I will become one with the all. This is Shunya. This is loss of individuality. But this is not the component of Sat. Sat is higher than that because Sat represents truth or reality. Something that is very rare to find in this material world. But as it is, this information is available now. So, Sat, eternality. It is said that there is no difference between Krishna, his names, his activities, his paraphernalia, his abode, and his companions. The first component of the body of Krishna is Sat, which means that his activities are eternally going on. He's eternally killing demons. He's eternally doing the Rasa Leela dance. He's eternally delivering his devotees. He's in eternally engaging in joy. And eternally, his toe has breached the outer shell of this cosmos. And the causal ocean or the Karana ocean. Now, it's important to understand that when you're dealing with the causal ocean or the Karana ocean, it, although it is composed of a water, it is not of the material five elements of fire, ether, earth, air, water. It's not made of, it's spiritual water. So this water is actually pouring down through the three worlds, through the cosmos, purifying everything as it goes. It is called River Ganges. So this River Ganges flows because Vishnu's toe has breached the world. It's breached the outer shell. How do we know that? Krishna is doing these things eternally because the Ganges River is still flowing. So we're still receiving those beneficial auspicious waters, which by the way can never be impurified. Okay? You may think with your mundane eyes that, okay, this um Ganges River is starting in the Himalayan mountains and it's you know it's snowing and it's raining and uh, the, the ice is melting and it's coming down. But that's just a mundane gross aspect of the Ganges River. Mother Ganges is actually traveling through three worlds. Actually, check this out. From where Vishnu's toe breaches the top of the cosmos, it takes 1,000 celestial, 100,000 celestial millenniums for that water to reach Druva Loka. Druva Loka is the pole star, the north star, freedom for the slave, the north star, pole star. All of the stars revolve around this one star. That's how the people at sea at night find their directions because that one star don't move. The other stars keep moving. Druva Loka is at the top of our universe and it takes 100, and I'm going to revise the numbers, but I believe it's 100,000 celestial millenniums. Now, in our time, I think a millennium is a thousand years, so that's 100,000 times a thousand. And then we got to go to demigod years, which there are, check this out now. This is the astronomical numbers taught to us by the Vedas. Um, There are, Adivya Yuga is the four ages of Kali Yuga, going backwards, Dwapara Yuga, going backwards, uh, Treta Yuga, going backwards to the first one, Satya Yuga. Those four ages compose 4.32 million years, okay? Now, four of these cycles make one Divya Yuga. 
there are 71 Divya Yugas, so that's 71 times 4.32 million. There are 71 Divya Yugas in a Manvantara. There are 14 such, so that's 4.32 million times 71 times 14. 14 Manvantaras in a day of Brahma, and Brahma lives 100 such celestial years. So we're talking about whatever number I just came up with times 100,000 years. That's how big the cosmos is. That's how long it takes for water or ocean to flow from the top of the cosmos where Vishnu's toe has breached the material plane down to the topmost planet. So by the time the Ganges get to us, it's already been so many places and it's done so many things and shown so much mercy. So I'd like to give a shout out to Mother Ganga. You know? Namo Namaha. Seriously. Shout out to the devotees of the Lord. The biggest and the smallest ones. You are all my masters as far as I'm concerned. And I'd like to say that all people worship Krishna in all aspects, whether they know it or not. And Paramatma guides all of us. So all of you people are welcome to come home, whoever you are, particularly the conscious community, to whom I, I have a specific affectionate connection to the conscious community because that's what I came up out of. So shout out to everybody, the conscious community. And 2014 is almost over, and we're getting ready for the year of the Lamb. Haribo.